The opinions expressed on this show are those of the participants, the hosts, the guests, and the callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions and views of Southern Stone Communications, WNDB Radio, its employees, and friends. Comments regarding WNDB's programming can be addressed to DLang at DaytonaRadio.com. Live from Daytona Beach, Florida, bringing a voice to America's forgotten working class, speaking the truth for the America that Washington left behind, making America great again, one hour at a time. This is Trump Talk Live, where we the people have the right voice. Presented by the Republican Party of Volusia County. Here now are your hosts for this episode, Vic Baker and Joe Fieldus. Greetings, fellow American patriot Republicans, and welcome to the new American moment. Democrats blink again, FBI lovebird texts, Obama spying scandal, FBI corruption, American economic resurgence episode of Trump Talk Live, the home of fearless truth-telling about the one man feared most by the deep state denizens of the D.C. swamp, despised by hypocritical Hollywood, make-believers, and resisted by delusional Democrats. Fancy Nancy stood and filibustered for eight hours in a meaningless gesture of resistance to a two-year budget deal that will end the government shutdown nonsense for now. She wants a DACA deal without offering anything President Trump wants. That means no border wall, nothing more for security, no end to chain migration for the visa, visa lottery. That's what Democrats call bipartisan. Everything they want and crumbs for you. I've got news for you, Nancy. Chuck Schemer saw the writing on the wall after Trump called his bluff on a government shutdown the first time around. He's not coming back for another dose of humiliation with Schumer shutdown part two. It's finally starting to dawn on slow-learning Democrats that Trump is on the right side of the issue when it comes to border security, tax cuts, deregulation, and giving businesses what they need to regain American prosperity. They keep dreaming about the dreamers and fantasizing about voters buying into their class envy claptrap. A thousand dollar bonus may be crumbs to you, fancy Nancy, but it means a lot to a middle class working family. Yes, the budget deal lifts spending caps and adds $300 billion or so to our military disaster relief and domestic programs over two years. But if this economy starts growing at five or six percent, federal revenues will blossom. We still have a spending problem, and President Trump will deal with it. But first things first, we have to rebuild our military now and rebuild parts of America ravaged by disasters. Those things are not options. Another disaster of epic proportions is unfolding right before our eyes. The truth is finally coming out about a sinister deep state plot to cover up the crimes of Hillary Clinton and to frame President Trump over a non-existent collusion with Russia. This is the biggest threat to our Constitution since its founding. This threat from within puts our republic in greater peril than any other menace on the face of the earth. The real story is finally coming out. A whistleblower reveals the Russians were giddy over using their Clinton connections to get access to American uranium that would later be sold to Iran. A text between Trump hating Robert Strzok and Page says President Obama wants full briefing on everything, which by the timing must include the surveillance of Trump Tower. Remember when Trump said he was wiretapped? Okay. Former top federal prosecutors are now predicting that high-level FBI and DOJ officials will go to prison. Through all this, the mainstream media that chased after President Nixon a generation ago now blithely ignores the festering pile of lies and treasonous acts by the partisan Obama and Clinton loyalists who have soiled the Constitution with their Machiavellian machinations. Through all this, the stock market is riding a roller coaster while unemployment hits a 45-year low and the benefits of tax cuts and deregulation fuel new fears of inflation as the economy prospers. Oh, and did I mention that Americans no longer believe the crap the media crap propagandists are shoveling about tax reform? It's hard to argue with a fatter paycheck or a generous bonus from your boss. 
Trump Talk Live comes to you each Thursday from the Daytona Beach studios of WNDB 93.5 FM and 1150 AM. Our thanks to the maestro of master control, Phil Kincaid, who orchestrates the voices of Trump world for your edification and listening pleasure. You can, you can also listen to us anywhere online by going to TrumpTalkLive.com. When the Wi-Fi works, which it does not tonight, we come to you by Facebook Live. So it's not going to happen tonight, folks. You're going to see us later on Facebook. Volusia Calatars Chairman Duncan DeMarsh, who rides the graphic controls and assists with production of Trump Talk Live, deserves our thanks, along with the uh, fellow teenage Republicans, Ian Escalante and Malcolm Swaggerty, who deserve our thanks. I'm your Trump public and truth teller, Vic Baker, hosting this program alongside the man whose keen insights and sharp wit add huge insights to our Trump public and education and explication. 2016 Volusia Trump Pence campaign chairman, Joe Fieldus. Good evening, Vic. Hello, friends. Yesterday, newly discovered text messages from disgraced FBI agents Peter Strzok and Lisa Page revealed that in September 2016, then President Obama wanted updates from them, indicating his involvement. We'll talk more about this bombshell re revelation later on. But treason is not my focus tonight. I wanted to report on some positive news. The President told the nation last week that there has never been a better time to start living the American dream. This is our new American moment. And as if by magic, yesterday, late, Democrat leader Chuck Schumer agreed to a new budget deal. Now Chuck is a liberal schemer, but he's not politically deaf. He heard what was being said about the Democrats after their horrible performance at the State of the Union address. He also heard the hoots and howls after his previous effort to resist the president, when in order to please his nutty Democrat base, he shut down the government. That bit of political theater blew up in his face. All last week, Defense Secretary Mattis told everyone in Washington, D.C., that our security was endangered by the Obama-era spending cuts being imposed on our military. I am very sure Schumer heard this message. The pressure was on. Schumer knew he didn't have a leg to stand on if he kept being the face of Democrat obstructionism. So now there's a budget deal. They're working on it right now. But here's some key parts. It includes huge increases in defense spending. Under this deal, defense spending would, would, would be set at $700 billion this fiscal year, $40 billion more than House Republicans were seeking, and $716 billion next year. This includes $140 billion in emergency defense funding. The old limit on military spending will be increased by $80 billion this year and $85 billion in fiscal 219, which begins on October 1st. The Democrats also agreed to other items on the President's domestic agenda. $20 billion would go toward infrastructure initiatives, funding everything from water and sewer improvements to bridge repairs. There would also be new money to fight the opioid epidemic, epidemic fund mental health care, repair and rebuild veterans' health clinics, all of which are priorities for the president. The deal does not include immigration reform, DACA, or fund the wall. These issues are to be addressed after this budget is passed. President Trump offered full-throated endorsement of the deal in a Washington evening tweet saying Republicans and Democrats must support our troops and support this bill. Besides the good news that Congress is finally doing something, there was also a symbol of our new American moment at Cape Canaveral on Tuesday. A massive rocket, rocket called Falcon Heavy, the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two, was launched on a mission intended to gather information about the launch system itself. It can carry a tremendous payload and will pave the way for the next generation of American space exploration. This technological triumph included two booster rockets returning from the mothership back to the Cape 
and landing themselves upright precisely on target. It was a remarkable scene. This was all achieved by a company called SpaceX, an American enterprise, not a government agency. Vic, that rocket soaring upward is us. It's America. We're confident again. We're back. And we have a president that is lifting us up, all of us. Let's roll. Let's hope we come to a safe landing as in the fashion of the Falcon Heavy. Um, Rand Paul, Libertarian Republican uh, of Kentucky, uh, who advocates for reduced federal spending and getting our deficit under control, is standing alone in the Senate uh, and blocking the spending bill that was agreed to by Schemer and McConnell, the turtle, um, on <laughs> Thursday. So Thursday night, we've got a midnight deadline, or there's going to be a government shutdown. The Office of Management and Budget has already advised agencies to prepare for yet another shutdown uh, if they don't come to some agreement. What Rand wants is um, an amendment, at least in a vote on an amendment, at the very least, to restore spending caps because he thinks this is out of control spending and he's fearful it's going to send us down a rabbit hole of um, uh, oblivion, financial oblivion. Uh, I don't tend to disagree with him, but I, I do agree with your your point about the military priorities that face us and other national priorities that are before us right now. And uh, we have to get someplace with this. So also Tea Party Republicans in the House are not too happy with it. And there are a lot of Democrats that will vote against it. So uh, it's fate is uncertain, although Trump, President Trump, has endorsed the two year deal and he has his reasons. Uh, now, here is um, what the president said about whether or not we have a shutdown. If we don't change the legislation, if we don't get rid of these loopholes where killers are allowed to come into our country and continue to kill gang members, and we're just talking about MS-13, there are many gang members that we don't even mention. If we don't change it, let's have a shutdown. We'll do a shutdown, and it's worth it for our country. I'd love to see a shutdown if we don't get this stuff taken care of. That's what he said, and he was talking about the, the issues that he wants on the table. That is uh, end of chain migration, end of visa lottery, build the wall, strengthen our border security if you want a DACA deal, and this DACA deal is not in this spending bill. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about what Gen General Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, had to say about the importance of this, of this uh, two-year budget to the very defense of our way of life when Trump Talk Live returns. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. We're not done yet. More Trump Talk Live is just ahead. In God we trust. In America, we believe. Feeling stuck in a state of compensation stagnation? You know, another year with no raise. Then let State Farm Agent Sonia Mori in DeLand help you get to a better state with a discount double check that can stretch your hard-earned dollars a little farther. Sonia will go through your car insurance to make sure you're getting all the discounts you deserve. Discounts that could add up to 40% and put a few hundred extra dollars in your pocket. Sound good? Then get your budget to a better state by calling State Farm Agent Sonia Mori in DeLand today. Discounts may vary state to state. It's smart to have a savings account for a rainy day. But what's your plan for saving for college? Did you know people with a 529 plan, which is designed to save for college, save 46% more than those without a plan? And Florida Prepaid offers two types of 529 plans, so you can choose the one right for you. But don't wait. Your chance to get a Florida Prepaid plan at this year's prices ends February 28th. Enroll today at MyFloridaPrepaid.com because starting is believing. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Welcome back, Trump Republicans. Uh, Joe, you said in your opening remarks uh, that there's got to be a reason why they came up with this two-year deal, as sloppy as it may be uh, in some matters in terms of debt uh, reduction. Um, there has to be a reason when you're when you're talking about your very your very survival uh then i think you have to put us put aside some of these other issues joe i think that's the key uh secretary mattis was all over washington all last week he told everybody that would listen 
that we need to stop these uh, mandated spending cuts on our military. I think they had closed door meetings and, and this message got through. And I, again, those numbers, I mean, we're talking 700 billion this fiscal year. That's an $80 billion increase between now and October. And in addition to that, the bill include the budget includes 140 billion in emergency defense funding. That's got to tell you something. Let's hear uh, from Secretary Mattis uh, why we have to do this so urgently. Number three. To advance the security of our nation, these troops are putting themselves in harm's way. In effect, signing a blank check payable to the American people with their lives. Our military has been operating under debilitating continuing resolutions for more than 1,000 days during the last decade. During last week's State of the Union address, President Trump said, weakness is the surest path to conflict. In a world awash in change with increasing threats, there is no room for complacency. Failure to implement or fund the 2018 National Defense Strategy will leave us with a force that could dominate the last war, yet be irrelevant to tomorrow's security. We need Congress to lift the defense spending caps and support a two-year budget agreement for our military. And, that, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, if he said that in public, what do you think he said in private? Well, listen to the rest of what he had to say. And he did this. He actually came to the White House briefing room to deliver these remarks so that they'd all be paying attention. And when General Mattis speaks, you really want to pay attention. Let's listen to cut four. For too long, we have asked our military to carry on stoically with a success at any cost attitude. The fact that our volunteer military has performed so well is a credit to their dedication and professionalism. We expect the men and women of our military to be faithful in their service, even when going in harm's way. We have a duty to remain faithful to them. Absent a budget this year, America's military will not be able to provide pay for our troops by the end of the year. We will not be able to recruit the 15,000 Army soldiers and 4,000 Air Force airmen required to fill critical manning shortfalls. We would not be able to maintain our ships at sea with the proper balance between operations and time for training and maintenance. We would have to ground aircraft due to a lack of maintenance and spare parts, degrading our pilots' proficiency. We would deplete the ammunition, training, and manpower required to deter war and we would delay contract for vital acquisition programs necessary to modernize our force. I cannot overstate the negative impact to our troops and families' morale from all this budget uncertainty. Thank you, General. Uh, wow. Now, now let's talk, talk about domestic traders, okay? Let's talk about uh, J. Edgar Comey and the book memoir that he's going to put out early now because of all the heat that's being put on the FBI. These guys know how to sell books, don't He's they? moved up his memoir date because the FBI is under, quote-unquote, intense scrutiny. And also, Judicial Watch is suing the FBI for documents on the Comey book deal and how Comey coordinated his testimony before the Senate Intel Committee. So, um, Judicial Watch, thank God for Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch going after all these these rug rats uh, that are at, um, at the, the core of this uh, D.C. swamp. Vic, I read that Comey has been offered a position as an ethics professor at James Madison University. Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Can, is, it, is that, like, unbelievable? Um, uh, well, I don't know if a convicted felon can serve in that post. Well, he's not convicted yet, so no, he's taking well, the money. He might yeah. be able to take the money and right. run before that happens, you know. Uh, the President of the United States himself said the new FBI tax, and we have graphics, are bombshells. President took, Trump took to Twitter on Wednesday to comment uh, that the new texts indicate newly revealed text messages between FBI paramours Peter Strzok and Lisa Page include an exchange about preparing talking points, points for then-FBI Director James Edgar Comey uh, to give to President Obama, who wanted to know everything we're doing. I remember Obama said he was hands-off and all this stuff. I don't think so. A message from Page to Strzok was among thousands of texts between the lovers reviewed by Fox News. The pair both worked at one point in special counsel Robert Mueller's probe until they were removed. Okay. Now this, this wasn't a bombshell by the news media uh, account. This, uh, pre the president sent a tweet, and he called this a bombshell. And here's what Louis, Louis Gohmert has to say about this in cut number one. 
it means the president wants to know what they're doing to try to stop Trump because that's clearly from all the other text messages that's what they were working on that's what they cared about and so uh, you know we need to find out we can't be like the FISA court we've got to actually have the facts we uh, we need to get to the bottom of this and find out what the president sure. knew and when he knew it so, uh, Congressman wow. Gohmert, uh, how, do, you, do you all recognize that? What did the president know and yeah, when did he know it? Yeah, that was Senator James, uh, Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee asked that question in the, the Watergate, Watergate hearings. Uh, at the Sam Urban Watergate hearings, 1973. Yes, I remember sir. it well. Now, uh, how big a deal is this, Congressman Gohmert? It is extraordinary. And, and clearly the FBI covered for Hillary Clinton, the DOJ covered for Hillary Clinton, and uh, we have got to get the facts out. And, you know, uh, 40, I guess 43 years ago, Steve, Frank Church, Senator Frank Church, Democrat, uh, uh, chaired hearings to find out if the NSA, the DOJ, were spying on Americans, were surveilling, listening right. to their conversations. And then what do we do? Decades later, we have this FISA court that allows warrantless uh, surveillance, or well, they provide warrants to surveil uh, without having to go public right. with any information. And as far as I can find, Steve, this is the first time the FISA court has ever had any pursuit of their transcripts mm -hmm. or what was being said now the whole hoo-ha this week is about this and that is that the dossier according to the Nunes memo and now backed up by the Grassley Graham memo and uh, the Democrats rebuttal will not refute this they're just throwing their own talking points into it to try to muddy the waters the fact is that the the dossier which was likely not written by um, <laughs> The Russians or, you know, I mean, it, it was apparently something that may have come out of Sid Blumenthal's hands, who was the hit man and the smear job artist for Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton for years. He smeared Monica Lewinsky after he got into trouble with that and a lot of these women that uh, had complaints against Bill. And he went after all the Clinton's enemies with these smear tactics. And he was briefly working as a consultant with the State Department and with the Clinton Foundation simultaneously. The, the connections, the dots are getting connected, Joe. Michael Goodwin, chief political columnist for New York Post, wrote this uh, after all this came out. Quote, the Washington swamp, the deep state, is bigger, more vicious, and more dangerous to American liberty than even a cynic could have imagined. Now, the question arises, was the FISA judge careless or merely deceived by the FPA? What do you think, Congressman Gohmert? One of two things, either the judge was duped with uh, false information, with the lies into signing a warrant, or the judge is uh, just so worthless it was part of all this and didn't care if he didn't have the uh, facts. But as a former judge, I can tell you, and I was talking to John Carter, a former district judge, mm -hmm. if, if somebody lied to us in court, and especially a lawyer, we would be after their license to practice law. We would, and I found out that if you put one lawyer in jail one time for contempt, right. then the lawyers work really well with you after that. Yeah. And this kind of fraud, Congressman Gohmert says, uh, by the FBI should land some very high-ranking people in jail. Well, if a fraud is presented to the court and the courts manipulate, you don't have to have a hearing. You can just order them in contempt for six months in jail, and that. these people should be in jail for what they did. Yeah, Joe. Let's go for some low-hanging fruit. How about Peter Strzok, the FBI agent? They got him all over the place with these text messages. This man committed multiple criminal acts from what we know from the memo and everybody else. How about we just start on one guy, and then like he says, you start with one and all of a sudden dominoes fall. One of two things has to happen. We have more comments from some very smart people coming up. Uh, one, uh, convene a grand jury or appoint a second special counsel completely independent of this mess that's going to go after. Uh, we also know that the, the newly released text messages suggest that Strzok and Page were using untraceable phones when talking about Hillary. There's another revelation. Now, now here's the other thing. The Democrat response, Joe, which Trey Grady has a theory about, uh, he thinks the Democrats are being real clever because they put a lot of classified stuff on, on, a, on methods you know, and operations into the memo, knowing full well that puts the president in a bind. Does he release it all and jeopardize um, you know, methods and operations of the FBI? Or does he redact and get accused by the Democrats of hiding something? So here's what Trey Gowdy said about that. 
I think uh, the Democrats are politically smart enough um, to put things in the memo that require either the Bureau or the Department of Justice to say it needs to be redacted. Therefore, it creates this belief that there's something being hidden from the American people. And I mean, keep in mind, this is the same crowd that voted not to release our memo and voted not to gain a lot of this information over the last 12 months. But unfortunately, we're in an environment where you would include material that you know has to be redacted and you know responsible people are going to redact it just so that question will be asked. Also, Joe, I mean, are you kidding? Uh, he also says the Demo he's seen the Democrat rebuttal and he says it does nothing to invalidate concerns raised in the Nunes memo. Keep in mind, whoever gets to go second, um, it's always better than going first because you know what you're responding to. Um, our memo was designed as a notice document to the members of the House Intel Committee on our side that those of us who have seen the underlying material have concerns. Um, and it ultimately it was voted on to release to the whole House and now it's public, but, but in its infancy, it was designed to notify other Republican members of what we had seen. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the Democrat memo um, does attempt to rebut some of our points, but I, I think that the salient points made by our memo still exist and they're still true. Um, a, a little bit of it is also just creating so much dust and cloud that people just give up and say, well, you're saying X and you're saying Y, I'm just going to tune out. That might be a little bit, a little part of it too. Now. Uh, and you also, Joe, uh, Gowdy says you have to believe the phony dossier served as the foundation for the warrant application, you know, as, despite what the Democrats say. And if that's the foundation and it's, it's completely fake, I mean, uh, wouldn't that mean that everything that derives from that is invalid? Well, let's listen. If you have enough without the dossier, then why did you include the dossier? If you have enough without the dossier, why did you in your court filing lead with the dossier? Um, lawyers don't start with their weakest argument, and you certainly don't start with an argument that you don't need to make and should not have made. So the fact that you used the dossier tells me you must have felt like you needed it uh, or else you would not have included it in your court filing. And, you know, info, info, Joe, about the source or the financer of the dossier was not conveyed to the FISA court either. Keep in mind the information that Republicans argue should have been in the initial application also was not in the renewals. Uh, the bias of, of, of some folks who were investigating the president, um, the bias of, of, of Chris Steele, the fact that he was desperate to do anything to prevent President Trump from winning. That's something that a reasonable tribunal would want to know if you're evaluating a source. So there you have it, you know. Uh, our friend uh, Victor David Hansen had this, and I think it sums it up. We're going to have to go to a break quickly. So. All right. Yeah. A, a number of powerful Obama officials thought they had both the moral right and administrative means to nullify Trump, and they were not shy in breaking the law to exercise them. We will return with more of this muck and mire when Trump Talk Live returns. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll-free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Keep your radio or phone app or computer right where it is for more Trump Talk Live, where good old-fashioned American common sense is making a comeback. One of the newer areas of personal injury law that we specialize in here at Farrah and Farrah involves an injury called mild traumatic brain injury. This injury often occurs during an accident, and often the injured doesn't even lose consciousness. But the injury is real, and the symptoms are debilitating. We're talking about memory loss, the inability to focus, and personality changes. And very often, the MRI or CAT scan come back normal, but the symptoms are still there. So we bring in a neuropsychologist who does other tests that will prove that this condition exists. We are working hard in this very important area of personal injury law, and we are finding that even relatively minor accidents can result in a mild traumatic brain injury, which is anything but mild. So don't wait. Go to farinfara.com to learn more about traumatic brain injuries or call us at 456-3333, Daytona. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. 
Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Okay, let's say thank you to our sponsors, Marino's Pizza in Deland, Best Pizza in West Volusia, Milne Roofing, 386-986-8688, Milne Roofing. And our friend, Sonia Moray, make her your state farm agent. Ask Sonia for an insurance checkup. All right. Well, you remember, I remember very well, March 4th, 2017, President Trump put out this tweet. How low has President Obama gone to tap my phones during the very sacred election process? This is Nixon Watergate, bad or sick guy. Nearly a year later, we know the FBI was investigating the Trump Tower servers during the election. Trump was right, and Obama was spying on Trump because Obama was keeping tabs on the whole thing. Now, the FBI withheld notes from their interviews with Christopher Steele, the purported author of this trashy, um, go ahead and show that graphic, that, that uh, trashy dossier, uh, dossier, dossier. Uh, that it was apparently laundered from, it seems like it, and we're going to hear more about this from some folks in a minute, it may have been laundered from uh, Sid Blumenthal through Christopher Steele and Fusion GPS to try to, to uh, remove by several layers the tracing to the Clintons. But uh, this, is a, this looks more and more like a Sid Vicious uh, hit job is what it looks like. You know? And so we don't know, you know. Senator Chuck Grassley released a m much less redacted version of the Senate Judiciary Committee's criminal referral of uh, Christopher Steele this week. Comey is in hot water. The unredacted memo reveals the FBI misled the F FISA court about Christopher Steele's contacts with media outlets. And according to the Senate, Senate Judiciary criminal referral, Steele lied to the FBI about his contacts with the media, such as Yahoo News and Mother Jones. Steele previously told the FBI that he'd not spoken to any media. Grassley reveals the FBI knew Steele lied about his contact, but did not disclose this pertinent information to the FISA court. Also, a footnote in the unredacted Grassley memo states that the FBI failed to provide the committee with 1023s, those FBA forms to document meetings with sources. So um, a the, th lot the of thing about Mr. Steele that people may forget or maybe didn't realize that he was an employee of the FBI and then he was fired by the FBI at some point. So this man was deep into the FBI one way or the other. Now, uh, Joe DeGenova, who was uh, a former U.S. attorney in Washington, D.C., a tough prosecutor of, 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 of great repute, uh, he predicts criminal charges against the FBI top echelon for all of this mess. He thinks that we're going to see several criminal charges against a number of top DOJ or FBI officials. And let's hear the first comment from Joe. This is now piling on in a very big way. We are headed toward a very sad ending for the FBI and senior DOJ officials. McCabe is gone because Ray knows what's in the other emails and the other text. McCabe was sent packing as a result of Christopher Ray being briefed by a number of people who have access to the investigation that's underway, which is going to lead to criminal charges against a number of people. What you are seeing coming out now in the text messages is just the minimum of what is available now to DOJ officials as they watch sadly who do you gonna get charged Joe I don't mean to interrupt but who are we talking I, about I, I believe that several several a uh, high FBI officials will be charged criminally and it is conceivable that some DOJ people will also be charged criminally what about James Comey uh, I, I can't answer that question because too much of the information about Comey is filtered through other people um, it is clear though that at the time prior to the election and subsequent to the election, there were a group of people inside the FBI at the senior levels on the seventh floor who decided that they were going to protect Hillary Clinton, they were going to change 302s, and they were going to make sure that she are was testimonies. Explain they to were some going people. to change 302 interview notes. They were going to exonerate Hillary and they were going to frame Donald Trump. It is inescapable, no matter what all these people are saying at the New York Times and the Washington Post with their silly editorials, they are missing one of the great corruption stories of American law enforcement. One and of sad the to say, it involves the senior levels of the FBI and it is a national disgrace. 
and it's disgraceful that the mainstream media chooses to ignore it and Democrats choose to consider it nothing of importance. I mean, the worst law enforcement scandal in history, Joe, what do you say? Next bite. Prosecute. I would consider this the largest law enforcement scandal in history for this reason. The activities of McCabe and others and Bruce Orr and others were designed to subvert the Constitution and a national election, the most serious offense under our Constitution. Isn't that the definition of treason? It is. It is. It is. Now, Fox News analyst Greg Jarrett has been very insightful about this stuff. He had some comments about the text and what they reveal about uh, the FBI and whether we can consider these agents, at least these agents, to be honest brokers of the execution of justice. One can bicker about the meaning of some of the vagueness <coughs> in these text messages, but it's abundantly clear, and today's messages just reinforced it, that there was such extreme uh, political bias on the part of Struck and Page and personal animus toward Donald Trump, the candidate, and then the president, that these two people should have been nowhere near the investigation. And, you know, some people have said, and I've watched them on other programs, they said, well, when Mueller found out, he fired Strzok. Well, he was on the Hillary Clinton case, the lead investigator. Then he jumped to the Trump-Russia case. Then he jumped to the Mueller case. So for two years, how much damage did he do before he was caught? Yes, and uh, Jared further commented on the Grassley-Graham letter, which further buttresses the case. If you just look at the Grassley-Graham letter, it lays out a meticulous case of how the court was misled, deceived, evidence was concealed, but it may be even worse in those transcripts. Leon Panetta was wrong when he said, well, the Intel Committee didn't even interview the judges. I got news for them. They have no authority to do that. But they do have authority, as witnessed by this letter today, to get their hands on the transcripts of the hearings before those FISA judges. Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch has been suing Joe uh, to get these documents uh, and bring them to light, and with some success now. And uh, uh, he talks about it. What, is, what does this message mean, this text message? Is there, are they referring to the previous investigation of Clinton's emails or the uh, the uh, ongoing investigation of possible collusion involving Trump? Well, which is it? Uh, uh, which is it, Tom? It's either about the email investigation or the Russia investigation. Either way, you see President <laughs> Obama being intensely involved and in wanting to know everything about either the Clinton email investigation or Russia investigation. Pick your poison in terms of presidential involvement in these sensitive criminal investigations. Now, I've always wondered why President Obama has skated really free from any serious inquiries about his involvement in the Russia investigations, his knowledge about the dossier, its origins. Remember, he, you know, he's a politician too, was running the DNC in part. Did he know about the payments of the DNC and Hillary Clinton and the dossier's use? in the uh, Russia investigations and the FISA applications. Did he know about the dossier's use, I would think, uh, to justify unmaskings? Uh, these are questions well, that uh, have to be asked of President Obama. Oh, you know, absolutely. Th this president is being criminally investigated about his communications with the FBI director about a criminal investigation. Why isn't there similar in uh, inquiries into what President Obama was doing? Everybody's asking that question. That's exactly right. Um, and Joe DeGeneva, the old prosecutor, about Sid Blumenthal, get Sid ready, fire him up, his involvement in all this, his dirty hands on this. This shows that the FBI was bootstrapping all of the information that it was getting, and it was basically a circular firing squad, so that all the information was based on the same information, and that therefore nothing that was being presented to the FISA court was actually verifiable. And let me just say something about Leon Panetta. I saw his comments this weekend where he condemned Chairman Nunes for politicizing intelligence. What a disgraceful comment by a former CIA director. Leon Panetta should be ashamed of himself. He's obviously not reading the papers. What's more, 
He obviously has not read the April 26, 2017 opinion of the FISA court in which they accused the FBI of purposely and illegally and unconstitutionally leaking FISA 702 information to private contractors, which is a felony. You've never heard Mr. Panetta say anything about that. You've right, never heard go. Mr. Panetta say no. anything about any of the conduct of John Brennan, the single most political CIA director in history. And Brennan's comments this weekend about all of the stuff that Nunes is doing rank among the most disgusting political comments by any CIA, former CIA director in history. Tell us what you really think, Joe. John Brennan is deep into this, and he, the wheels of justice have got to roll towards him, too. Oh, I think the unmasking with uh, Susan Rice and John Brennan and the Samantha Power and all those other people had their hands dirty on this, too. Now, um, I'm watching the clock. We still have a little time left. Sarah Carter, uh, vaunted uh, uh, investigative reporter. She's turning up information now about Uranium One. There was another congressional hearing this week about that. And there's a guy named Campbell, William Campbell who's dying of cancer, by the way, but is determined to make it onto the Hill to testify what he knows. He was an FBI informant on the Uranium One scandal. He broke his silence Wednesday in explosive testimony. Campbell gave four hours of testimony and more and answered every question from three congressional committees, Senate Judiciary, House Oversight, and House Intelligence, according to attorney Victoria Tenzing. That's his, his attorney. In the testimony obtained by Sarah Carter, Campbell reveals for several years he had a relationship with the CIA, which then involved him working as an FBI informant doing, doing the, because of close connections he had in uh, Kazakhstan and Russia with their nuclear energy industries. Now, you got to listen to the first comment from Sarah about what Campbell is telling us about what's going on. Uh, you, this whistleblower... He's determined to reveal the truth, even though he's dying of cancer. He says Republicans were skeptical of the Iranian deal and fearful that Russia and the Uranium One deal, the, the, the Iranian nuke deal and this uh, Uranium One, that Russia would supply the uranium from this Uranium One deal to Iran to make a nuclear bomb. This is the reason why they didn't want the Uranium One deal to go through, and they were screaming mad about it. But everybody tried to assure everyone that Russia was no longer, and the Russians themselves, they were lying about it, that they were no longer dealing with Iran on their nuclear reactors. But at that time, William Campbell, the informant, was actually providing information, and this was months before, that Russia was still dealing with Iran. And this is a major issue. So despite all the information that he provided to the FBI and to their counterintelligence unit, the Obama administration chose to ignore that and move forward with the sale of Uranium One. Which is outrageous, giving our uranium resources to Russia? By itself, you talk about by collusion. Itself, by itself, Uranium okay. One is a scandal. Now, Sarah scandal says scandal. the Russians were actually bragging about using their Clinton connection to get access to, to this uranium. But this was what he was testifying to those uh, committee staffers who were questioning him, that the Russians were consistently bragging about their relationship with the Clintons and that they would be able to move this through the Obama administration without any trouble. And I know that that's something that he really wanted to bring forward. This Look, he's been suffering from cancer. He had his second bout uh, with a cancer diagnosis, and he believed that he wasn't going to make it, and he wanted to ensure that his information became public and this was yeah. the only way me, he could do it now the attorney for campbell is victoria tunzing she's well known in washington uh she uh gives us a little background on whole on all this all developed a few years back let me take you back to 2005 because that's when this really started the russian plan to take over u.s uranium uh, piles that was when guess what bill clinton former president and his multi-gazillionaire friend frank jufra traveled to kazakhstan and bestowed all kinds of praises on the dictator there and ended up oh my surprise with uranium mining rights and it was then my client is told that the Russians begin to plan strategically how they could take over uranium, particularly in the United States. And one of the key uh, proponent or uh, elements of that plan was to get this CFIUS approval to buy uranium one. And a final comment from Sarah Carter before the break, Joe. The Russians were bragging about the Clinton fix. 
They were so confident, the Russians, that they told Mr. Campbell that with the Clintons' help, it was a shoe in to get CFIUS approval. And they were so confident in that that they even had him open up a new office because they were planning on the kind of business they were going to do as soon as CFIUS approved it. You feel you want to take a shower now? Okay. Let's go, let's go to the break and we'll be back in a moment. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. We'll return in just a moment with more Trump Talk Live, getting America right again. The Taste of New Orleans comes to Mardi Gras weekend in New Smyrna Beach with the fourth annual New Smyrna Beach Gumbo Festival. The flavors will flow on Flagler Avenue on Saturday, February 10th from noon till 5. Taste multiple gumbos from local eateries and vote on your favorites. Gumbo tasting passports are just $15 and passports are sure to sell out. So order yours early by texting GUMBO to 40691. That's GUMBO to 40691 or go to nsbgumbo.event. Eventbrite.com. Passports can also be purchased on site at three star locations along Flangler Avenue. Gather your friends and family and come ready to celebrate Mardi Gras weekend at the fourth annual New Smyrna Beach Gumbo Festival, Saturday, February 10th from noon till 5. For more information on Mardi Gras weekend, go to partyonflangler.com. Sponsored by Riverside Clinical Research, New Smyrna Chevy, Metro VCS, and the Flangler Avenue Hospitality Group. Brought to you by WNDB. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. There's a popular meme on the internet. There's a hashtag that's going around full of Schiff, referring to the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, who has shoveled so much Schiff in the last year that uh, uh, you could you could bury Daytona Beach in it. You know, that's how much there is. Anyhow, uh, Adam Schiff uh, apparently sent his staff to try to collect classified materials for the FBI after Ukrainian, I guess these were Ukrainian pranksters posing as Russian lawmakers, told him that Putin had naked pictures uh, to, of Trump for blackmail purposes. And, and Schiff was licking his chops to get a hold of this material. And it involved apparently Trump getting, uh, Trump getting involved with a model a reporter. It had something to do with the Miss USA pageant or something. Uh, it was a few years back. In any case, as you know, this was completely a joke by these pranksters who were talking to Adam Schiff, and he had no idea he was being pranked. Let's listen to the phone call. Yes. Olga Buzova is a uh, friend of the uh, the reporter Sovchak. Yes, she's a friend of reporter and I think the special agent of Russian Secret Service, Ksenia Sovchak. Um, that Sovchak is or Olga is? No, Sovchak is Ksenia. Okay, and so Buzova met with Trump uh, in in uh, New York at some point after the 2013 Miss Universe. Uh, yes. Pageant. Absolutely, and she got uh, compromising materials on Trump after their uh, short relations. Okay, and, and what's the nature of the compromise? Well, there were uh, pictures of naked Trump. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Putin was made aware uh, of the, the availability of the compromising material? Yes, of course, uh, Buzova shared those materials with uh, Sobchak, and Sobchak shares those materials with uh, Putin, because she's a goddaughter of Putin, and Putin decided to press on Trump. Um, and, uh, and the materials that you can provide to the committee or to the FBI, uh, would they corroborate this allegation? Sure, of course. Uh, when they were in Ukraine, we got their conversation by the phone where they discussed those uh, compromising materials. We are ready to provide it to FBI. So you, you have recordings of both Sovchak and Buseva uh, where they're discussing the compromising material on uh, Mr. Trump? Absolutely. 
Okay, we've had enough of that, Joe. I mean, can you believe this? Well, Matt Gates uh, of, of uh, Florida has called on uh, uh, Schiff to resign. Um, so how does how does this disgraceful a, behavior is is lead Democrat does it, in the intelligence? Yeah, it lead them. How does he take a call like that, and how does he sit there and ask those questions? This man's what what? How does he even get involved with this? Uh, when I used to be in Boy Scouts, we used to send the younger tenderfoot scouts out on sh uh, snipe hunts for these non-existent birds. <laughs> well, wow. He's on wow. a snipe. He's on a snipe hunt. <clears throat> New poll is out. Majority of Americans no longer believe the mainstream media propaganda. They now give Trump proper credit for the economy. Despite the majority of the mainstream media shoveling crap, uh, placing the current success of the American economy in the hands of former President Obama, I don't know how that happens, Americans across the country are feeling the paychecks and seeing the light. Just released poll by Quinnipiac University, Americans, regardless of political persuasion, now give more credit to President Trump for fixing the economy than Obama. Poll shows that currently 48% of respondents believe President Trump is to credit for our recent economic strides, while only 41% still believe it's because of Obama. Note, for, for, note, note this. 7% of American adults believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows. So there are some people in this country who will believe anything. 41% believe that Obama is, is going, when our economy is, gets even better than it is now, it's going to be Obama's who did that? Well, uh, yeah, and uh, apparently I think there must be more than 7% of American adults who believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Wow. I'm just guessing based on that wow. poll. But anyhow, uh, but it's it's trending up. It's because of all the lies that have been perpetrated by the media. But let's, let's, let's just talk about what's been going on. President Trump went to Cincinnati to talk about that, and let's hear the, the top of his Cincinnati rally. Tax cuts. I signed into law. Your paychecks are going way up. Your taxes are going way down. And right now, for the first time in a long time, and you've seen it, factories are coming back. Everything's coming back. They all want to be where the action is. America is once again open for business. All right? Open for business. Cut three. What about unemployment, Mr. President? Unemployment claims have hit a 45-year low. Think of that. I mean, just think of that. And something that I've been talking about for two years, campaigning, and everyone said, you'll never do it. After years of wage stagnation, wages, so what happened two days ago and a month ago, wages are now, for the first time in many years, rising. In fact, more companies are pursuing pay increases right now than at any time in the last long period of time. They actually say in the 21st century. Can you imagine that? It's amazing what people with some good ideas can do. Yeah, right. The Democrats during the State of the Union last week pouted over Trump's good news for Hispanics and blacks the lowest unemployment for those groups in recorded history. And here's what he had to say about that in Cut 7. You have the lowest Hispanic unemployment in the history of our country. This isn't me saying, this is the charts, the polls. We have the lowest in the history of our country. Dead silence, not a smile. In fact, there was one guy when I said the lowest African-American unemployment, he was sort of clapping. Like, who was that guy? He's a nice guy. I think he was a reverend. And he was, and I wouldn't say it was exactly arousing, but he, he was putting his hands together. And I want to find out who he is. I'm going to send him a letter of thank you. And he was probably severely reprimanded. Don't you think, Rob? I think so. Because he was the only one. So that means they would rather see Trump do badly Okay, then our country do well. That's what it means. It's very selfish. Yeah, I'd say that so. is that is what it means, they, and that is true. They would rather see our country sink rather than Trump succeed. And you watched the Super Bowl Sunday. Did you see any players kneeling? No, I didn't. Well, here's what Trump, uh, President Trump uh, uh, had to say about that on Cut Nine. Because we're all in this together. We're one team, one people, and one family, and we're saluting. One great American flag, and everybody stood up yesterday. There was nobody kneeling 
at the beginning of the Super Bowl. We've made a lot of improvement, haven't we? That's a big improvement. Okay, and here you go, Joe. Uh, President Trump's approval rating tops Barack Obama by four points at the same time of his presidency. Despite all the bad news that they've shoveled at him, President Trump holds a 48% approval rating in the Rasmussen Daily Tracking Poll. That's likely U.S. voters. They approve of him. 51% disapprove. This is four points better than Barack Obama had at the same point in his presidency, Joe. Michael Goodwin pointed out that we know now from the memo that 100% with 100% certainty that the mainstream media is part of the swamp. Well, <laughs> I, I would say they're part of the swamp with cameras and microphones, you know, and uh, the wall will be built. He said that to the folks in Cincinnati. Uh, and he talked about the dignity of work and the forgotten Americas. And, and he said there's never been a better time to be an American. We are on the upswing. This is our pure American moment, Joe. And it's time for America to rise up and be proud of itself. And, uh, you know, so let's have a parade. Why not? The military parade idea, you know, I, I saw... We're some. about to wrap here. So okay, yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's not a bad idea. Let's do it. Okay, and we've got 30 seconds, I guess, so we have a little time to talk about that. They, they're, they're, apparently, they're already lining up the resistance people to lie across the Pennsylvania Avenue in case the Abrams tank come rolling, and somebody made the point that the, these tanks will tear up the streets. The streets are not made for that. But what the heck? We're going to find out. Tanks for the memories, America. Our final show in two weeks. We'll see you then. stuck in a state of compensation stagnation? You know, another year with no raise. Then let State Farm Agent Sonia Mori in DeLand help you get to a better state with a discount double check that can stretch your hard-earned dollars a little farther. Sonia will go through your car insurance to make sure you're getting all the discounts you deserve. Discounts that could add up to 40% and put a few hundred extra dollars in your pocket. Sound good? Then get your budget to a better state by calling State Farm Agent Sonia Mori in DeLand today. Discounts may vary state to state. You've been listening to Trump Talk Live, making America great again, one hour at a time. Follow us at Volusia County Republican Party on Facebook or go to our website, trumptalklive.com, for updates. Join your Trump Republican hosts, Vic Baker and Tony Ledbetter, for another fearless edition of Trump Talk Live next Thursday at 7 p.m. right here on WNDB 1150 AM and 93.5 FM. Trump Talk Live is presented each week by the Republican Party of Volusia County, where we the people have the right voice when it comes to defending America's founding values. In God we trust, in America we believe. The Republican Executive Committee of Volusia County is responsible for the content of this advertising. FM.